Cornerback is the position group that has the most on the line during this weekend's Orange and Blue game. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast and Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Happy Thursday. I am Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find me in the subtext group if you want to be a Locked On Gators insider. Join subtext.com slash Locked On Gators. Links in the description below. And after the spring game, we will be doing individual scouting reports, basically, of players. And if you're in that group, you get the information and you get to make a request of a player, whatever it may be. Today's episode of Lockdown Gators is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed, whether you win or lose with your first bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And like I said, I believe that cornerback has the most riding on this spring game in terms of just figuring out what that room is going to look like completely. We'll talk about receiver next. Don't worry, because I, I know that that's another one. But at corner, it's a mostly healthy group. You know, there, there's guys that get like a little, little banged up here and there. But for the most part, the corner room is pretty pretty fully healthy. And I think that that's great when we talk about giving you that 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 competition that we're looking for in that room to figure out, you know, who's going to play because last year was bad, right? <laughs> I think everybody can agree. Last year was bad at corner. Uh, and the only guy returning starter, Jason Marshall Jr., because uh, you had Jalen Kimber opposite him and Jalen Kimber is gone now uh penn state i believe he's at and Jaden hill starting at nickel he's at texas a&m so it's a healthy group that's open competition right now jason marshall jr gonna be back as a starter that's the expectation that should be the expectation but then opposite him you have the conversation of is it devin moore is he finally healthy if he's healthy is he going to be the number one guy and then you have to have the conversation of who's going to be in that rotation because Florida, especially under Billy Napier, has always used corner rotations. So are we looking at a Jakeem Jackson opposite Jason Marshall? Uh, are, are we looking at is Jameer Grimsley cracking the rotation? Is that what we're going to see? Because, again, this is a thing where, especially at corner, you need to have multiple guys ready to go because – and I, I hate I hate bringing this up because I feel like a jerk bringing it up. I know I'm not a jerk for bringing it up, but I feel like one. But Devin Moore has not been healthy. So while pretty much all of us, I think, expect the starting two to be Jason Marshall Jr. and Devin Moore, odds are at some point there's going to be either a rotation or a replacement due to injury. Again, I'm knocking on wood. I, I would never wish injury. It's just guys that tend to be hurt tend to stay hurt. And, and so you need to figure out what your depth is going to be. Is Dijon Johnson taking the next step? Ha, has he taken the next step towards becoming a legitimate boundary corner? Like, like during the spring game, it's going to come down to, I think, a lot of not just who's going to make the play, because we all agree that the Florida Gators secondary needs to create more turnovers in 2024 than they created in 2023. Like if you create a couple more turnovers, you win games. And you can't say, oh, if the offense turns it over just a little bit less because they were great at protecting the football last year. Florida didn't lose the turnover battle frequently, but they rarely won it just because they never forced turnovers. Like the offense took care of the ball. They just didn't force turnovers defensively. So who's going to make the play? Because that that does matter. If Jakeem Jackson's coming in and he makes up, if he has a great pick, he's probably going to get more playing time simply for that, even if he might not be the best corner. If you can create turnovers, you're going to be out there. Look at Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters was never in his career even a top 
five corner, we'll say. But Marcus Peters forced turnovers, so he was getting big money. He was getting big playing time. That's how that works. They'll take that trade off of, yeah, he might get beat a few times, but he makes big plays. Also, who doesn't make a play but isn't giving up catches? Because that also has their place. Especially when you look at depth. I think when you're looking at a depth player, you're not really too concerned with how many turnovers this is, create, is he creating. You're more focused on, can we take out our starters to give them a breather, keep them healthy, keep them fresh, and bring in depth and not sacrifice quality of play? Because from a depth guy, it's like when you're talking about a backup quarterback. Like You don't care if your backup quarterback can go play hero ball and be Patrick Mahomes. You care that he's not going to be Nathan Peterman and throw five picks. Like that, that's what you're looking for. So at corner, who's going to make plays and who is not going to make plays, but is just playing tight coverage because those all matter. It's all about taking this into context. And when you look at a really fast receiver room, they're going to be tested athletically here. And I do think that it's also really important to just look at this position group and just say, what kind of progress have they made under Will Harris in the short time that he's been here in the in the four and a half months, four months, we could say even what kind of progress have they made? And so I think that just looking at the corner room, there's a lot not necessarily riding on this spring game, obviously, but there's a lot to figure out in this corner room. And this is also going to be the last opportunity for the coaching staff to really take a good hard look and evaluate these these corners and say, do we need to attack a cornerback in the second portal window that opens next week? You're going to get your answer this Saturday. The coaching staff will get to see that and we'll get to make an and we'll get to make a decision. Again, they're mostly healthy. Corner is a mostly healthy group. I would expect at least one corner to play on both teams. Just because I think right now, looking at corner, you've got Jason Marshall Jr., you've got Devin Moore, you've got Deshaun Johnson, you've got Jakeem Jackson, and then Jameer Grimsley are kind of like the five that people are looking at right now, for at least for the most part, and, and Teddy Foster as well, so even six. It would make sense to get one of the guys, probably one of the younger guys, more run. Like, like Jason Marshall, we know what he is for the most part. Like, whether he's taking strides or not, like, we, we kind of know what we're going to get from him. Hopefully, we get what he was at the end of the 2023 season. But Teddy Foster, Jameer Grimsley, we've never seen them in games. We've seen them in the little scrimmages that they've done, but we've never seen them play in a game. What are they going to look like? Maybe Devin Moore plays a little less in the spring game so that you don't risk having an injury there, which, by the way, all of his injuries have been very minor, but best ability still availability. So, um, and he did have the uh, shoulder to say it was in uh in the 2022 season but even then I, I think for the most part we're just trying to figure things out at corner and you're getting your last evaluation of these guys so i do think that corner there's a lot to be found out during this spring game probably the most questions to be answered about them in this spring game like i said we're going to talk about wide receiver here uh because i do think it's also very important but first we're going to get a quick word from game time Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to first pitch, and I can tell you now. Uh, May 14th, 15th, and 16th, I believe the dates are. The uh, New York Mets host the Philadelphia Phillies. I will be going to one of those games. But thanks to game time, I don't have to go, oh, like, you know, I'll book it now and just, if it gets rained out, it gets rained out. No, no, no. I'd say nay. With game time, I get to wait until a day, two days, the day of the game, check the weather, check the pitching matchup, and make my decision of which game I'm going to go. Because I'm not, I'm not trying to go to trash game. I just want to make that one clear. Like, I'm not going to go to, to, it was a Quintana and just watch him give up bombs to Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper. I say nay. That's how I'm doing. I'm gonna wait till the day of or the day before and figure out which Phillies Mets game I'm going to. 
Take the guess we're going to buy tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free reviews in the podcast and on YouTube. And like I said, we're talking about receiver here. Uh, because I feel like this is another spot where we, we've, like, because with corner, I said we got Jason Marshall and then everyone else. And we're trying to figure things out there. I feel like receivers also that kind of spot where we go, you got Trey Wilson and then everyone else. And I do think that with receiver, there's more of a, uh, I guess, like a, like a tiered situation, like there's levels to this, you know? Um, and so I, I think looking at receiver, you kind of get to sort out those tiers and figure out the tiers and maybe someone breaks out of them. Because I think a lot of people, we look at the receiver room as Trey Wilson. And then below that we go, a little Jackson's in there. And it's also important. I do think to, to acknowledge that for receiver, it's, probably going to be different from what we expect because i do think that a lot of gators twitter myself included are are considerably higher on guys than the coaching staff is like i think that a lot of gators twitter loves khalil jackson i think khalil jackson is a great jump ball specialist which has its place i mean look at romo dunze uh from washington in the first round gonna get drafted he's a jump ball specialist it's what he does he, he he's not gonna separate great for me, as someone, when I'm evaluating or judging receivers, I want you to separate. So I'm not as high on Cleo Jackson as everyone else is. I don't care if you're making the contested catches. I want you to separate and not have to make those contested catches. So I think that Cleo Jackson, he's going to start. Like, I have no problem saying that. I do think he's still one of the better receivers on the team. Uh, I'm just not as high on him as a lot of Gators Twitter is. Marcus Burke, I think I'm higher on him than most people on the coaching staff based on playing time, right? And so I do think that this is kind of an opportunity to sort things out. Like the Florida Gators football Twitter account posted uh, yesterday about Marcus Burke making like a diving catch in the end zone. It's like, well, is he going to do that in the spring game? Is he going to do that in an actual game? Because if he's doing it in practice only, it doesn't matter that much, right? Don't care what you're doing in practice. Care what you're doing in the game. And so I think receiver, you get to figure things out. Has Andy Jean developed the way that we expect? Well, Andy Jean's been banged up. But point being, answering questions here. Aiden Mizell, he looks like he's bulked up a bit. And I know that listed, like, height-wise and weight-wise, uh, they took an, a half inch off his height, so they just gave us a more accurate measurement. And then weight-wise, he added, I think it was 12 pounds, um, which you could tell, I do think that most of it's in his arms, which I don't necessarily care too much about. I'd prefer if you, you bulked up the legs a little bit. Um but Aiden Mizell, you've, you've bulked up a little bit. Are you ready to deal with press coverage? Are you ready to run through physical coverage? And are you ready to make a play downfield on the ball? Let's find these things out in the spring game. Like, I hope Aiden Mizell is on DJ Lagway's team. We don't have the teams yet. But I hope Aiden Mizell is on DJ Lagway's team. Just because I think at that point we'll get DJ Lagway just heaving a long ball to Aiden Mizell. That's, that's what I want to see. So I think we'll get the answer about Aiden Mizell. Is he going to be a tier two player? And by tier two, I mean, is he going to rotate in? Is he going to get playing time? Or tier three, is he only going to play against Samford? That's basically what I mean when I say tier two, tier three. I mean, are you actually going to play? Or are you going to rotate in against Samford? Are you going to maybe get a series every game? That's the answer that I want. Uh, Marcus Burke, what are you going to be? I'd consider Marcus Burke as tier three last year. He didn't play enough for me. Is he going to be tier two this year? Chimari DK, expecting him to be tier two. What if he surprises that he actually is even better than we expect? Again, I expect him to be tier two. I expect him to be the third starting receiver. What if he surprises everyone and is like, and actually, I, I'm the second best receiver on this team, which he can be. Like that. That's still very open for me. With what Trey Wilson did last year, he's wide receiver one for me. No doubt in my mind. If Chimari DK separates better than Khalil Jackson, he'll be wide receiver two for me. Just simply, also, I want to see Chimari DK 
same team as Graham Mertz in the spring game. Because the expectation is, or the, the, the connection that they have, that Graham Mertz and Shimmery DK have, I want to see that. Like, I, I don't want to wait till August 31st to see it. I want to see that in the spring game, and I want to see them do it, because that's what you that's what you brought in Shimmery DK for. You brought him in to give Graham Mertz a legitimate pass catcher that he has a, a rapport with, that he has chemistry with. And also, just to be honest, Shimmery DK has one year of eligibility left. That means when DJ Lagway is the starting quarterback, presumed starting quarterback in 2025, Shimmery DK is not going to be here. I don't care too much about them developing the chemistry. I care about it with Andy Jean, Aiden Mizell. Like, I want to see basically young versus old here. I, I want to see Eugene Wilson, Andy Jean, Aiden Mizell, uh, Tank Hawkins. I, I want to see all of that. Uh, Abrams, if he's playing, I want to see all of them with DJ Lagway. And I want to see Marcus Burke, Khalil Jackson, the older guys with Graham Mertz. And I, and I want to see them kind of duke it out there because you do have to find a, have to kind of figure out this separation and, and split the difference at some point. Because there's just so many guys in a room that are relatively equal in talent, if we're being honest. Like, I don't think that just because Marcus Burke was tier three last year means he's bad. I think it just means that it's a close competition when you look at skill set and he's not what they're looking for. And so I, I want to see someone kind of separate themselves from the pack a little bit here. And the spring game is a damn good chance to do that. And looking at receiver and corner as two positions that are going at each other, that we're trying to figure out what are they going to do? What are they going to look like this year? This is going to be a fun time to watch that matchup. Personally, like that's what I'm looking forward to. I want to see this matchup a ton. Um, I will watch that matchup multiple times. I can tell you now with the subtext group, um, there's going to be quite a few guys in both those rooms that we're going to be looking at and we're going to be evaluating. Figure it out. Have some fun. We are going to wrap up by talking about the offensive line, but first we're going to get a quick word from FanDuel. NBA playoffs are right around the corner. NHL playoffs are right around the corner. Baseball is in full swing. Jackson Holiday is called up already. I'm assuming we're going to get Paul Skeens. Don't worry, though. Wyatt Langford is up before we both of them. I'll throw that one out there. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs. Thank you, Christopher Morell. The Grand Slam against the Padres uh, made me some money and helped my fantasy team. Same. All on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. And remember that FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. To wrap up today's episode of Locked On Gators, we are talking about the offensive line. And I, I want to just make this one clear that offensive line is still one of the positions that obviously needs to get sorted out a lot. We've talked about that in recent weeks with, um, I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there again, uh, Damian George maybe not being as up to par as we expected. I'm not a golf guy. Uh, but Damian George not being at the level that we were hoping he would be at with the transition to guard. Maybe that's an issue. Bryce Lovett exceeding expectations. Rod Kearney playing center and guard. But the reason that I have offensive line at the end of this show, why I have them as third here, is because of injuries mainly. The Austin Barber injury, we're not seeing this offensive line in its full form. And and for me, that that's really the... the uh, the this, this separator here, the distinguishing factor why offensive line is not higher, because I do think that it's very important to watch them play in the spring game. They looked awful last year in the spring game, and then they looked awful last year in the regular season. Injuries have bitten them on the offensive line kind of a lot. And now, offensive line, you still need to kind of figure things out and perform, but they're at the bottom of the list here just because we're not going to see the starting offensive line in the spring game. What it comes down to, Austin Barber has been banged up the entire spring because he had that offseason uh, uh, surgery. We'll see what he's going to be uh, when it comes time for fall ball. But 
He's not been there. We're not seeing the offensive line in full form. And and yes, we do get to still see the the spring game evaluations of players individually. We get to see what Damian George looks like at guard in a game. It's the first time that the public gets to see all of that. We get to see, because again, he's never played guard. Not a single snap in his career. He's never done it. So the spring game, we get to see him do that in a game-like setting. The first time the public gets to see that. So I do think that it's important to watch that and get to evaluate him individually. I think you get to evaluate a lot of guys individually. We get to look at Bryce Lovett and then kind of say, is he actually exceeding expectations or were they just blowing smoke? Rod Kearney. I would not be surprised at all if Rod Kearney plays on both teams, maybe one at center opposite Jake Slaughter and then on Jake Slaughter's team as one of the guards. Wouldn't shock me at all to see that, get him run at both spots, get an evaluation at both spots and get to see how he plays next to Jake Slaughter. Would not be surprised to see that be a possibility. I don't know if it's going to be, but get to see him there. Uh, Kanaji Harris, what are you going to look like this year? We get to see uh, Brandon Crenshaw-Dixon, Devin Manuel. What are they going to look like? And, and also, I know that I'm, I'm throwing a lot of guys on two teams here. What if we were to see them one time? One team, they play left tackle, right tackle. The other team, they switch tackles, uh, which I don't think will be the case just because you need to get the other younger tackles some run and just see what you have in case of a in case of any injuries. But there's a lot to figure out with the offensive line. And again, the reason that I, I don't have them there um, as the, the first or second team is because I really just, I, I don't know if, if we're going to be seeing the healthy groups there. And like, could have also put receiver here, sure. But genuinely, just I, I don't know what we're going to be getting healthy-wise. Um, and like, Austin Barber has been in, in non-contact this whole time. Not expecting to play. Uh, Cam Waits, he, I, I don't know if he's going to be playing, but he, he got banged up at certain points. Devin Manuel got a lot of run. Caden Jones is in year two. We didn't see him last year. Uh, Fletcher Westfall is a true freshman. Like, we're going to be seeing a lot of guys probably play during this spring game here. Like, I, and I do think that this is going to be a time where we see Kanaji Harris start at guard next to Jake Slaughter, and we see that happen in the spring game, and we see that carry over through to the fall. And I think, again, at guard, I want to see Damian George, Bryce Lovett, and Rod Kearney there and just figure out, do we have an option here, or is this a spot where I do think that we will see them look at guard in the transfer portal that opens up next week. But... This is a, a time where if Damian George balls out in this spring game, then we go, oh, maybe maybe we don't need a guard in the portal. If Bryce Lovett or Rod Kearney ball out at guard in the spring game, maybe they go, oh, we we don't need a guard in the portal. Like we, We've got an answer there. Whatever it may be, you can answer questions here. And again, I, I'm not expecting to see a ton of, at the tackle spots, because I think we'll get Devin Manuel, mostly at left tackle, Brandon Crenshaw-Dixon, mostly at right tackle. Uh, and again, I, I'm not sure how much we'll see of Cam Waits or Caden Jones. We should see significantly. Fletcher Westfall, we should see a lot of. But I think at tack, I think at offensive line, your tackle spot, you're not going to get a ton. of like You'll see some evaluation here, but you're not going to need to see what the tackles are going to be during the season because the injuries. Interior, you're going to see two of your starters play next to each other, which would be my expectation. And you get to try to answer your question at a, at a right guard, because I do expect Kanashi Harris to play left guard, Jake Slaughter at center. So you get maybe an answer at right guard. But it, it's it's got a lot going here but in terms of individual evaluations, so not so much as a unit, but individual evaluations and going into the second portal window, a lot to figure out with the offensive line. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free. If you listen to the podcast, we are available daily and free on YouTube as well. For Lockdown Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work for Giants, Country, and NFL 33. And as always, I will see you all next time.